the jungles of Borneo live one group of animals more bizarre and diverse than any other. Borneo is home to an amazing array of weird and wonderful bugs and beasties. They might not be as large as elephants or famous as orangutans, but insects are critical to the ecosystem, propping up the food chain and shaping their environment. Plus, up close, they look amazing. Borneo is one of the world's insect hotspots, with as many as a thousand species found on just one tree. Tonight, I'm with DGFC's resident bug boffin, Jack, and we're on a mission to find some of the jungle's craziest creepy crawlies. My name's Jack Devlin, and I'm from Wales. The reason why I decided to study bugs, it was the incredible alien nature of them, really. It's a whole new world. It's incredibly important that insects are studied and appreciated, because without them, a forest can't evolve. The little things, are just as important as the megafauna. Danagrang is such a special place. Given that there's so, so many insect species and predictions have said there's up to five million more left to discover, this would be the place that you'd find some more species, definitely. How does this thing work? It's quite simple, really. It's just a nice plain white sheet. And behind it, we'll put a, a mercury bulb, which is a special kind of bulb, which doesn't give off any heat, but a lot of light. And what we're going to do is draw the bugs in from the forest and have them collect on the, uh, the sheet. So it gives us an amazing opportunity to see some of the more freaky nocturnal bugs we have here. Jack, I've had an idea. We'll uh, give it an hour or so to really settle in and draw the bugs in. So we'll go for a wander and uh, see what we get when we come back. Good stuff. So I've got a bit of a treat. We have a Malaysian forest scorpion in here. Now this is a little UV torch here. So if we turn our headlights off, okay. and we turn this little thing on, we should be able to wow. get a scorpion. That is incredible. It's not just scorpions that fluoresce. Our teeth do too, and it is also used in banknotes for security. It's thought that scorpions fluoresce to protect themselves. A substance in their exoskeleton causes them to glow under UV light. If they glow too bright, they'll stay hidden, keeping them safe from waiting predators. So this is one of the largest species we have here in Borneo. Uh, not entirely venomous, to us anyway, but it's enough for her to take down large insects, small reptiles, things like that. And the fact that she's right next to the centre, is that all right? It's nothing to worry about. They're a lovely species, really. She's beautiful. But Jack tells me that glow-in-the-dark scorpions aren't the weirdest thing we might find in the forest at night. Jack, this is awesome. It's like a night safari, but for bugs. Exactly. Gross. What is that? But even after all these creepy crawlies, Jack has managed to save the best until last. So just in here we've got a tarantula who's just had spiderlings. And they're really small, probably in their first instar. And spiders, a lot of them show maternal instinct, which means she'll guard these for up to one month after they've hatched. So there must be at least over 10 in there. The female, she would have hidden down into the bottom now. But those are all little tiny spiderlings. This is the coolest thing I've seen in the jungle. That is creep. They're, they're moving. The cool thing is, they as well have an instinct to stay in ah, the nest. That's good. That's a very good thing. <laughs> I've got an instinct to stay away from the nest. That's also probably a smart idea. Is it eating? All right. All right. Enjoy. Okay. See you later. Bye, Bertie. Jack, bugs are awesome. 
Now I can see why you study them. After our walk full of the most unusual creatures Borneo has to offer, it's back to our light trap to check on our findings. So here we have a really cool species of moth. To me it looks like a moon moth. Um, so these moths don't have any mouth parts. So when they emerge from their chrysalis, they have about two weeks to find a mate and pass on their genes and then that's it, they starve to death. So a bit morose. But, uh, Brutal. It's stunning though. Absolutely gorgeous. What else have we got? A dragonfly. Oh, amazing. Oh sweet, we've got a hawk moth coming in. Um, let me just grab a tub. Oh, well done mate, like a ninja. <laughs> so this is one of the larger hawk moth species we have here. I'm not entirely sure what this species is, so we'll take it into the lab and use our identification books and see what it is. Amazing. Cool. Let's do it. So, good start Bertie. And these are the books you want. Wow. And these are all about moths? Mm-hmm. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different species of moths here. And each of these books is about the different families. So we might be here for some time. Well, thank you, Jack. You've shown me a side to Borneo I never knew existed. Can I go to bed now? No, unfortunately, you've got a lot of ideas to do. I'll leave you to it. Hi, Bertie. Jack's knowledge and enthusiasm highlights how important insects are to Borneo's ecosystems. This forest is incredibly diverse and rich in bug life, from the weird to the wonderful and the downright terrifying. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a long night ahead of me.